This week on Inside Oswego Speedway, we've got a two-for-one special as we look back on the August 2nd Mr. Super Modified weekend as well as last Saturday's August 9th events brought to you by JP Jewelers. And we'll kick things off with the Mr. Small Block Super Modified event at Oswego Speedway back on August 2nd with Danny Apt and Jesse Barrett starting up there on row number one. And it was Apt in the 57, gaining the early advantage down the back straightaway as the field files into the third corner. But trouble would hit further behind. Alex Hogue and the 93 of J.J. Andrews, the 18 of Andrews Shartner all coming together into that third corner. Cars careening up into the foam as well. As you see Hogue trying to make it three wide down on the inside into that third corner. Not quite enough room as Andrews comes across the racetrack. Other cars getting involved, including the 99 of Dennis Rupert, the two of Matt Magner, and the 04 of Craig Harris. That would result in a single file restart with Jesse Barrett in the 02 leading the way into that first corner, but Apt would waste little time in trying to dive back into the race lead into corner number three. You're defending Mr. Pathfinder Bank, small block super modified. Danny Apt continuing to lead the way as the field files out of corner number four as Magner, Tessarario, Dalton Doyle, and Camden Proud do battle further back. Josh Kerr and Jason Simmons locked into battle there coming out of corner number one. Down the back straightaway into corner number three. Three wide one more time. Lacerdo on the inside. Anthony Lacerdo in the one. Josh Kerr in the middle. Dave Cliff on the outside. And once again, those racers run out of room as Jack Patrick, Tesserario, Magner, Harris, Shartner all become involved, including the 22 of Mike Bruce. As you get another look at the replay down the back straightaway, Lacerdo tried to make the low side move on Barrett in the corner number three. Kerr and Cliff shot up there to the outside. And all three cars come together. Russ Brown, though, in the 13 machine. Able to make a nice move to the low side to avoid that accident. We get one more look at it here on the front straightaway cam. A crazy look at this accident down the front straightaway as Craig Harris gets a lot of air there out of corner number four. As we get back to the race in action, out in front, Simmons in the 98 on the restart is able to move to the low side of Danny Apt into corner number one to take the top spot. Simmons looking for his second win of the 2014 racing season, but Dave Cliff in the 67 and the 13 of Russ Brown were on the charge. Brown's first event at the Speedway was the weekend prior to the Mr. Super Modified, picking up a win in the July 19th Summer Championship. Brown looking to go two for two in his events this season here at the Speedway. Simmons continuing to lead out in front on lap 20, 15 laps remaining. Dave Cliff in the 67 pushes a little bit high. That leaves the low lane open for Brown down the back. Shoot into corner number three. Move Brown up into the runner-up spot. Cliff into third. Well, it wouldn't take long for Brownie to close in on Simmons in the 98. He immediately began to go to work. Simmons just slips up just a little bit there into corner number one, and that leaves the lane open to the low side for Brown to take the lead, looking for his second career Mr. Small Block Super Modified championship and on the race's final circuit lap traffic looked as though it may come into play but it did not factor in as Russ Brown goes two for two at Oswego Speedway in 2014 gaining the win over Simmons and Dave Cliff second and third ahead of Danny Apt in that order as the field files across the line Russ Brown pulls into Turning Stone Resort Casino victory lane as Mr. Small Block Super Modified he would check with Speed Sport Magazine's Derek Pernasiglio in victory Small lane. Super Modified winner Russ tonight, congratulations. How did you get past the leader? Oh, he just made a little mistake in one and two there, and uh, I see he was getting loose, so I just backed the corner up a little bit. And it's one of our cars, so just as long as our hedger cars keep winning, that's all that really matters. You know, we had a pretty good car. Uh, Russ has uh, got the house car of our cars, so uh, I think he's a little advantage, but he's a heck of a driver, been here a long time racing, and uh, I guess if you're gonna go out, I guess it's uh, one of the best in the division. <laughs> These cars, you can bump and bang a little and uh, keep going. And it's a lot tighter racing. The Supers, you got to kind of set up your pass a little more. And uh, it's a little harder to pass cars than the Supers, I would say. But this class is a lot of fun. Like I said, you can bump and bang a little as long as you know the guys you're racing with. And uh, I just jumped in this car this week. I got to thank 4 Sevens Motorsports for, for letting me drive. The uh, car wasn't great, but we made some changes. And uh, it took off from the start. I'm not sure if maybe got a little damaged in that little jingle up in three and four, but uh, I'm very pleased with the top three the first night out with the car for the year. So. The highlight of the evening, of course, on August 2nd was the 28th annual $10,000 to win Mr. Novella Super Modified main event presented by Davis Brothers Incorporated. And it was the three of Brian Sweeney and the five of Tim Devendorf starting up there in row number one. Devendorf in the five machine would dart into the early race lead, but everybody was keeping their eye on David Danzer 
in the Bridge Street Jewelers car number 52 who started back there in the second row and has showed tremendous speed week in and week out since debuting his brand new Hawk Jr. chassis. As the field rolls down into corner number one, Tim Snyder, Joe Dosick, and Keith Champagne all doing battle. Joey Payne on the outside of the racetrack working down that back straightaway ahead of Randy Ritzkis as well as the 90 of Cody Graham. Graham now trying to look to the low side of the Ritzkis 37. The two cars make contact and Graham ends up in the steal on the outside of corner number four. Ritzkis in the 37 after contact with Ray Graham would end up in the foam in corner number one. So early on in this one, two cars dropping out, two contenders for the win and Ritzkis in the 37 and Graham in the 90s. You catch the replay here from the third corner camera. Graham trying to find room to the low side as the 90 and 37 come together. Cody shoots up the racetrack, tags the outside steel retaining wall. Both of those cars would be done for the night. On the restart, it only took a few laps for Danzer in the 52 to eventually find the high side on Devendorf to take the race lead as Brian Sweeney files into that third spot down into corner number one as the field works down the back straightaway. Joey Payne in the 99 was the car on the move though using the outside of the speedway working to the outside of the 68 of Michael Barnes next trying to check in on the 22 of Pat Lavery. Later on, the field working single file down into corner number one. Payne again working to the high side of the racetrack on the Lavery 22 to gain one more spot, locking in behind the three of Brian Sweeney, who continues to file behind the five of Devendorf. Notice the 52 of Danzer nowhere to be found. He was nearly a half track lead on the rest of the field. Payne one more time on the outside. This time works around the double O of Gosick with Sweeney next in line into corner number three in the CNY CPR machine. Payne now working up to the top side on the five of Devendorf leaves the low lane open. Sweeney tries to fill the gap. The two cars come together and Sweeney takes a vicious ride in the outside. Turn two wall landing directly on top of the Payne at number 99. Payne would slide down into corner number three, eventually spinning the other way. You get a look here at the replay. Both drivers were A-OK -okay as Sweeney took a hard shot into the outside turn two wall. As that car gets dragged down the back straightaway, both cars clearly done for the evening. Joe Gosick in the double zero was next on the move, trying to gain ground on the 52 of David Danzer as Gosick works to the low side in the corner number one to take the runner-up spot. But as soon as Gosick moved into second, smoke began to pour off the right front of that machine, a bad wheel bearing and hub on the Gosick double zero. He would pull pit side dropping out of this Mr. Super Modified event. With Danzer continuing to run away out in front, Pat Lavery, Michael Barnes, and Otto Sitterly began to move in on Devendorf out of corner number four and working down the front straightaway. Devendorf now in the Manth Brownell car number five beginning to fade slightly here as the laps wound out in the 75 lapper. Behind Devendorf and Sitterly, Dave Gruel and Bob Bond in the 47. The 4.7's Motorsports Machine going at it down the back straightaway. We had not mentioned Bond's name to this point. He started deep in the field, but was slowly starting to work his way to the front using the outside of the speedway, going around both Gruel and Sitterly down the front stretch. Danzer, meanwhile, running away out in front, slicing through lap traffic with ease. He had an opportunity on at least one occasion before yellow lights would come on to potentially lap the field in the Bridge Street Jewelers car number 52. Further on back, Michael Muldoon and that 51 machine riding high right now there on the hub rail in the corner number one. Pat Lavery trying to find a way by. That leaves the low lane open for the 68 of Michael Barnes and the 47 of Bob Bond as they continue to move their way through the field trying to gain ground again on the 52 of Danzer. Muldoon in the 51, one lap down after coming back on the racetrack giving Barnes, Bond, and Lavery a few fits there in the corner number one, but eventually they were able to make their way on by, but it didn't matter much. Out in front, David Danzer absolutely dominant on his way to his first career $10,000 to win Mr. Novella's Super Modified title presented by Davis Brothers Incorporated. Interviews from this event can be seen on MAV-TV Thursday, September 11th on Speedsport.
Central New York's fastest action continues in the month of August at Oswego Speedway, home of the Super Modified. Saturday, August 16th, it's Pathfinder Bank SBS Twin 20, presented by Bosco's Famous Italian Sausage and Oswego County Federal Credit Union. Then Labor Day weekend, it's the Budweiser International Classic 200. For more information, visit online at OswegoSpeedway.com. It's Pathfinder Bank SBS Twin 20, Saturday, August 16th, kids 16 and under free. The second half of this week's Inside Oswego Speedway gets us caught up on the action from last Saturday night, JP Jewelers night at the races, including Paint the Steel Palace Teal Night for Ovarian Cancer Awareness, and it was Dennis Rupert in the 99 and the 22 of Mike Bruce leading the 30 lap Pathfinder Bank SBS main event from the front row, and Rupert and Bruce would battle hard up there in that front row for the early portions of this event with Jack Patrick in the nine and the eight of Josh Kerr running right there behind. But Kerr pushes high out of corner number four, ends up making contact with the right rear of the Rob Pullen number 21. Pullen would get a flat right rear tire, sending him spinning into corner number one. Kerr had a flat left front. The 54 of Camden Proud also getting involved, nestled there against the hub rail in that first corner. After the restart, Bruce in the 22 would jump out into the lead looking for his third main event win of the season. Yellow lights would come on though one more time for the 27 of David LaTulip. On the restart, the 98 of Jason Simmons was the car on the move, working to the low side in the corner number three, getting under the one of Anthony Lucerto. Next, putting the 18 of uh, series point leader Andrew Shartner in his sights as they work into corner number one. And just a lap or so later, he would next move to the inside one more time on Shartner into that third corner, moving up now onto the back bumper of the nine of Jack Patrick. So Jason Simmons, who started a little bit deeper in the field, working his way through the pack nicely there, going into corner number three, nearly had a main event win a week ago, lost it to the 13 of Russ Brown, but continuing to move through the field again now under the nine of Patrick into that third corner. The next move would try to be on the 99 of Dennis Rupert coming out of corner number four, but the two cars would get together here on the front straightaway. Rupert going for a wild ride down the front stretch, ends up in the outside steel on the front straightaway going into corner number one. Rupert would pull into the pit area, done for the night. Simmons would have to rejoin the field at the tail side of the pack after being penalized for the contact. Back under green one more time. The lead was not where you wanted to be in this one. The nine of Jack Patrick trying to work to the low side of the 22 of Bruce into the third corner. They would come together and turn three, both done for the evening. Alex Hogue, after the restart, was the fastest car on the racetrack, working underneath the one of Anthony Lucerto to move into the runner-up spot, trying to give chase now to the 18 of Shartner, who now was looking for his third win of the season, and on the last lap certainly appeared to be well on his way, but as they worked out into that third corner, Hogue would get in just a little too hard and again into the back bumper of the 18 of Shartner. The two leaders once again spin in corner number four. Anthony Lucerto does a great job in the one machine to avoid the accident and inherit the lead. Now on the race's final lap, J.J. Andrews would try all he could to get to that top spot, but Lacerdo in the lighthouse lanes, car number one, just 16 years old, drives on to his second feature win of the season here at the Speedway over Andrews in the 93 and the three of Chris Proud as Lacerdo pulls down into Turning Stone Resort Casino Victory Lane for his second career main event win at Oswego. Uh, this, I don't know, we kind of had a good feeling we were going to win the first one. We started third. We were fast all night, and uh, we kind of had that one. And then tonight we came from ninth, and I was running fifth, and I was just battling for a top five, opening at a top five, and it all just worked out tonight. We definitely didn't have the car that some of these guys had. It's just this class is getting crazy, and something needs to be done about it. But I can't complain tonight because I'm on this end of it. Well, a little bit, a little bit. I didn't feel like I really had anything for them, and but yeah, I was sticking with him, but I didn't think I had enough to pass him. I, I had to wait for him to mess up, and I, I'm still waiting. Uh, it was all right. The, the car, the motor was breaking up all night, so we were just pretty much a sitting duck, so we just sat back and watched the action. Saturday night's JP Jewelers 50-lap Novella Super Modified main event saw the 0-2 of Brandon Bellinger and the 55 of Keith Champagne starting up there on row number one, a historical front row at that. Bellinger, Champagne, and then you had a Muldoon back there in row number two in the 51, but it was Champagne from the outside of that front row spot 
darting out into the race lead, quickly pulling away from the rest of the field. Down into that third corner is Joey Payne in the number 99, works under Muldoon, coming out of corner number four, trying to dart into the runner-up spot here in the early going, and he was able to do so. So Joey Payne in that brand new extreme chassis for Graham Strong Racing, working up into the two hole here early on, trying to chase down Champagne out in front. Meanwhile, further back, Michael Barnes in the 68 doing battle with the seven of auto center leads. We nearly go three wide one more time. Into corner number three, the 50 of Dave Gruel, your current championship point leader, gets pushed high in the speedway in that number 50 machine, and he would lose several spots here in the early going of this one. Up front, Champagne continuing to battle in the race lead. Payne trying to find a way by, 11 laps in the books. Champagne doing a good job in lap traffic. Here in the early going is the field one more time. Fans out three wide down the back shoot with Gosick, Muldoon, Barnes, and Sitterly all going at it. But as Champagne this time goes around the 45 of Mike Barbera into corner number three, leaves just enough room to the inside of the speedway open for Payne in the number 99 to dart into the race lead and take the top spot. Slipping Champagne back into second, Gosick riding in third. Meanwhile, Muldoon, Barnes, Sitterly, Ritzkis, and Lavery all in a good battle here out of corner number two as Barnes is able to find the bite on the low side, going to the low side of Muldoon, and then Barbera in the 45 into corner number three. Muldoon would get stuck on the top side as Sitterly and Ritzkis find their way by as well out of corner number four with Lavery and Danzer tucking in behind the 51 there into corner number one. Centerly trying to work to the outside of the nine of Stephen Joy in corner number two, but behind there's trouble. The 52 of David Danzer and the 68 of Michael Barnes get together on the back straightaway. Barnes would end up in the outside wall. Up in front, once again, nobody had anything for the 99 of Joey Payne out in front, and this one adds his name to the winner's list here this season at Oswego Speedway. Payne with another career win at the Steel Palace ahead of Champagne with an outstanding run in the Chris Ocetic number 55 for second. Joe Gosick came home on the podium in third as Payne pulls down into Turning Stone Resort Casino victory lane for Graham Strong Racing, finally pulling through in that extreme chassis. Uh, it feels really good. You know, we finally got our brand new car out and uh, you know, my hat's off to the extreme team. They worked their butts off this week. Uh, we had a tour up car last week and uh, you know, my crew, the strong crew, you know, we th this whole deal came together last year at the end of the season. You know, Ray had his faith in me and, and wanted to bring me in on as, as a teammate and put me back with the Strongs and uh, no better situation to be in. You know, money's no object. I got the best crew in the business, th three of the best crews in the business, and we all combine notes and, uh, you know, we all work off of each other and uh, here we are. Uh, really happy, really satisfied. Um, more than happy, just satisfied probably. Just uh, happy for this team, happy for Chris. Um, it's a good car. and. We get it going better every week, so. Ah, it's tough out there. Those uh, front cars were running really well, and uh, our car wasn't on the money, that's for sure. So I stayed on the bottom and made anybody that was going to get me go around me. So uh, third is uh, our second best finish for the year, unfortunately, with a week to go to Classic. So we'll take third, try to get a little better next week, and hopefully uh, good things for Classic.